Welcome back to another flight review. Today I'll be flying on Cathay Pacific from Hong Kong to Sydney. The flight departed at gate 65, which can be reached by the driverless train, but I decided to walk there. There are plenty of shops along the gate area, including restaurants, cafes, and convenience stores. I saw more and more passengers coming to the gate and knew this was going to be a full flight. Finally, boarding commenced and the queue for economy was incredibly long. The flight is operated by one of the newer triple sevens which have been refurbished, having a similar interior to the A350. For this flight, I've chosen seat 42 c prior to my flight, which is an aisle seat on the left of the cabin with only two seats on the road. This gives me more like room as there's nothing on my right. I will show you later on. This is how the world looks like. There's a hook on every seat for your clothes. I don't have to worry about the person in front of me reclining thanks to the space. Here's the seat overview. It looks similar to the 1850s with a bit of difference at its tray table and screen. The cabin is also configured in a 343 manner. There is a small storage area under the screen. I didn't open the cover fully because my phone was in there. USB charging is at the bottom of the screen. Also note that the ads are as long as 7 minutes, so do skip them. The IV is easy to use and navigate through. Movie options are great and definitely enough for a 9 hour flight. The touch screen is also sensitive. Movies come in different types and genre, with non-English films being mostly Cantonese. I've also enjoyed Cathay Pacific's flight map so much. It's one of the newest and interactive ones I've ever used, with one of the other being China Airlines. The flight map doesn't only give you information about your current destination, but also every Cathay Pacific destination. There's also an entire page that shows you numerical information about the flight. I've definitely enjoyed this more than the older IFE on the AV30s, which there's no control over what information to view, and I just have to wait for the cycle to repeat itself. There are two flight meals and a total of three choices each. I can't remember what the choices are, but one was fish, chicken, and the last one was vegetarian. The air was served at 1am, approximately an hour after departure. I had to wait for the butter to melt because it was too hot for the bread. I went with the baked seafood curry with ice. I initially didn't realize what was I putting into my mouth, but then I realized it was fish, calamari, and prawn. It tasted better than it looked. Although this seat offers more legroom and comfort, one disadvantage is that people's bottoms are going to work against you when they are waiting for the lavatory. Soon, I was waking up by the morning sunlight through the windows which someone left open. And then I visited the lavatory to fix my hair after the sleep. The lavatory was clean and scented with air freshener. It was obvious that the crew cleans up the lavatory every now and then. Then breakfast was served. It's a choice among a fruit platter, fried noodles, and English breakfast. I went for the last option, which tasted very nice. And we finally landed in Sydney Airport three minutes early. I've enjoyed the flight a lot. This is definitely better than the AV30 experience that I had when I flew from Sydney to Hong Kong. The seats are comfortable and the legroom is very generous. Catering on Cathay Pacific is of high standard. I'm a fan of Qantas Airways, but I still have to say Qantas has so much to catch up on catering in the long haul flight. Anyway, this is the end of this flight review. Please subscribe to the channel for more content like this.